Hello everyone, I welcome you all to my channel. In this video, we are going to discuss layout design rules and layout of an inverter. From the subject VLSI design. So first let us know what is the use of layout design or why we go for this layout. So if we construct a building, definitely we need a layout plan. After uh, drawing the layout plan only, we can go for the construction of a building. Similarly, if we want to convert a circuit into an IC, first the circuit should be converted into its layout. After that only, that layout is converted into an IC. That is, it can be fabricated in an IC. So, this gives the shapes which corresponds to the patterns of metal, oxide or semiconductor layers which makes the components of the integrated circuit. So, this integrated circuit layout is otherwise known as IC layout, IC mask layout or mask design. There are many processes for manufacturing an IC. Layout design rules describe how small features can be packed inside the IC and also how closely they can be packed. So normally in industries, the design rules are specified in microns. Made and called introduce the scalable design rules which is based on a single parameter lambda. So it is also called as lambda based design rules. The lambda is generally half the minimum drawn transistor channel length that is half of the channel length. This channel length is nothing but the distance between the mm, source and drain of the transistor. For example, consider 180 nanometer process. So, 180 nanometer process means the channel length is of 180 nanometer. So, if the channel length is of 180 nanometer means then lambda is the half of the channel length. So, 180 nanometer divided by 2 is lambda equal to 0.09 micrometer. So, here the polysilicon width that is the gate polysilicon width is of 0.18 nanometer. Normally, the designers often describe the process by its feature size. So, this feature size refers to the minimum transistor. Length. So, lambda is the half of the feature size. So, next, MOSIS, that is Metal Oxide Semiconductor Implementation Service, has developed a set of scalable lambda based design rules. So, this covers a wide range of manufacturing process. That is, different manufacturing process can use the scalable lambda based design rules. So, this rules describe the minimum width to avoid breaks in a line, minimum spacing to avoid shorts between the lines, and minimum overlap to ensure that two layers are completely overlapped. So, using these rules, if we design an IC or fabricate an IC, then definitely it will be an efficient IC. So, next we are going to see the design rules for layouts with two metal layers in an NL process. So, first we are going to see the minimum width spacing between the metal and diffusion. So, here we are using two metals, metal 1 and metal 2. So, for metal 1, the spacing between the metals should be of 4 lambda. That is, the minimum distance should be of 4 lambda. Width of the metal, it, is, it should be also 4 lambda. Similarly, for metal 2, the distance between the metal is 4 lambda. The width of the metal is 4 lambda. For diffusion also, the distance between the diffusions is also 4 lambda. And the width of the diffusion is 4 lambda. Next, we are going to see the contacts. So, this is the metal one diffusion contact. So, the contact size is of 2 lambda cross 2 lambda. So, the length and the breadth is 2 lambda and 2 lambda. Then, 
that contact should be surrounded by one lambda on the layers above and below. That means this distance is of one lambda. So the total size should be of three lambda. So next, the polysilicon. So the polysilicon uses a width of 2 lambda. So this is the polysilicon. This is used for gate. So the width is 2 lambda and the spacing between the polysilicon should be of 3 lambda. Then polysilicon and contact. So here also the contact size is 2 lambda and uh, the spacing above the contact and below the contact it is of 1 lambda. So the total size will be of 3 lambda. So the next, the N will surround the PMOS transistor. So at the top there will be PMOS transistor and at the bottom there will be NMOS transistor. So the N will surround the PMOS transistor by 6 lambda and avoids the NMOS transistor by 6 lambda. So the total distance will be of 12 lambda. So the transistor dimensions, normally the transistor dimension means it will be specified by a, their width by length ratio. That is W by L ratio. Then another one important characteristic is PMOS transistors are often wider than NMOS transistor because the holes will move slowly than electrons. So in order to drive the same current, it should have a wider transistor. So the PMOS transistors are often wider than NMOS transistors. this is the this is the unit inverter layout with a unit nmos transistor and double sized pmos transistor so if a pmos transistor want to deliver the same current as nmos transistor then it should be of double the size of the nmos transistor so this is the this is the unit inverter layout with a unit NMOS transistor and double sized PMOS transistor. So if a PMOS transistor want to deliver the same current as the NMOS transistor, then it should be of double the size of the NMOS transistor. So this figure shows the schematic for the inverter annotated with width by length for each transistor. So normally in digital system, if we want to achieve high speed, then we should have a minimum length transistor. That is short channel transistors. Thus these short channel transistors are faster, smaller and consume less power. So this is the schematic diagram for an inverter. So PMOS transistor of size 8 by 2 and NMOS transistor is of size 4 by 2. Figure C shows the shorthand we will often use for specifying a inverter. So the inverter consists of one NMOS transistor and one PMOS transistor. So PMOS transistor is the double the size of the NMOS transistor. So PMOS transistor will be using the size 2 and NMOS transistor will be using the size 1. So next we are going to see the layout of an inverter. So here we are using line of diffusion rule for uh, drawing the layout of an inverter. So this uses four horizontal strips that is metal ground at the bottom then N diffusion, P diffusion and metal power at the top that is for an inverter we have to give a power supply as well as we have to ground it. So here two metals are used one for giving the power supply and another one for using it for ground. Then there is N diffusion as well as P diffusion. So these are the four horizontal strips used in layout of an inverter. Then the power and ground lines are often called as supply rails. 
then we will be using polysilicon for constructing the transistor gates so metal wires are used uh, to connect the cells appropriately so this figure shows the cross sectional view of an inverter an inverter consists of p mos transistor and an n mos transistor so a is the input and y is the output so here the p mos transistor is connected to the power supply vdd and n mos transistor is connected to the ground now in this cross sectional view here uh, for indicating sio2 layer this light blue color is shown then this is for n plus diffusion then for p plus diffusion then for polysilicon that is gate then metal this is the uh, notations used for specifying the metal now here for uh, manufacturing the n mos transistor p type substrate is taken so in that two diffusions that is n plus diffusions are made one is for source and another one is for drain then in for uh, in the case of a p mos transistor an n well is formed in that two p plus regions are diffused that is for drain and the source so here uh, this p type substrate and the n plus diffusions form a diode that is this is p type and this is n type so here it acts as a at this junction it acts as a diode so the substrate should be tied to a low potential that is ground to avoid the forward biasing of the pn junction between the p type substrate and the n plus n mos source or drain likewise in the n well this n well should be connected to the high potential to avoid the forward biasing of the trans uh, diode so this is the layout of an inverter so here we are having n mos transistor this is our p mos transistor then this is the polysilicon for gate then this is the metal for uh, connecting to the ground as well as for connecting to the power supply here we are having well tap this is for substrate tap that is the substrate should be tied to ground similarly the well should be tied to the high potential so this is called as well tap and this is called as substrate tap so figure a shows the layout of an inverter the input a can be connected from the top bottom or left in the polysilicon the output y is available at the right side of the cell in the metal so here the p substrate and n well should be tied to ground and power respectively so this is the layout of an inverter with well and substrate taps so here we are having a well tap as well as substrate tap in the layout structure i hope you all have understood the basics of layout design rules and how to draw the layout of an inverter if you like this video kindly subscribe my channel and share with your friends thank you